Hi, my name is Kayla, and I am on staff here at the church as the kids' ministry um, worship leader. And I um, wanted to share with you guys a little bit of how um, I came to know the Lord as my heavenly father through the failures of my earthly father. And um, going back, I had a really normal childhood. I was homeschooled. My mom was really amazing, and she raised and homeschooled all five of us. And she's just, she's awesome, and she's instrumental in um, kind of leading us through what we went through as a family. But um, my parents met, and they got married at the church. Um, I practically lived at the church most days of my life. Um, and it was, I had a really, it was a great childhood, and I was a total daddy's girl. I um, really loved my dad, and he was the fun one. He was awesome, and he was great, and he taught me everything that I know about music, and that's one of the things that we really bonded over was music, and um, he taught me how to play guitar, and he really encouraged me to sing, and one of the most vivid memories that um, I have of my dad is when I was four years old, and we were sitting in the living room singing a song that I had written called Do You Know Jesus, and so um, music and ministry were the two things that really um, bonded us together, and I would go around with him and lead worship for a children's ministry, and um, I would do puppet shows while he would sing, and we would sing together, and then um, when I got older, we would lead worship at a Friday night Bible study together, and um, it was just, he was really the one who got me into um, ministry at a young age, and so um, my dad was really well-liked. He was involved um, at our church really heavily. He was one of the worship leaders. He worked in children's ministry, and so um, he was he was seen as one of the as one of the pillars of our church and he um, was charismatic and well liked and well loved and we seemed to have a really perfect life um, and i grew up knowing the lord and um, really wanting to pursue him after um, i struggled with some emptiness in junior high school and um, and just that uh, depression and anxiety from that emptiness kind of drove me to pursue the lord for myself and so freshman year of high school i did that and um, everything seemed to be going well. I started dating a boy and it seemed to all be really great. Um, and then at the end of freshman year of high school, um, in July 2012, um, I realized that something was really wrong with, um, with my parents. They were hiding something and they wouldn't tell us anything other than that my dad had hurt a lot of people. And I didn't understand how that could have been. Um, and so a couple of weeks later, um, maybe about a week or two before my 15th birthday, um, while we were sleeping, the police came and knocked at our door, and they had come for my dad. And all I could think of was, why? You know, what's what's going on? What's happening? Because in my mind, my dad was still this, this perfect human being. He couldn't do anything wrong. And um, I just remember thinking, before I knew what had happened, I was thinking, there has to, there has to be some mistake. There's some something false. Like, somebody must have framed him for something, anything that I could think to rationalize what was going on without putting um, my dad in this position of having messed up. And it wasn't until a couple of days later that I learned that he had been arrested um, and charged with um, child molestation and that a lot of it had happened at our church and even in our own home. And so, um, but at that point, I still couldn't shake the idea of my dad having done something wrong. He, that wasn't possible in my mind. And that image of my dad being this perfect, um, infallible human um, was shattered when I went to go visit him for the first time um, in the county jail. And so that was when I really began to struggle with, um, with my worth and with um, trusting anyone really, and even in my relationship with the Lord. To me, if my dad, who was so perfect and so amazing and so awesome, could mess up and fail me, then surely the Lord would fail, would fail me, because why had he allowed this to happen? Um, and I struggled with my worth. My dad had chosen his sin over me, over my family, so what does that say about me? And um, I also was looking for the love that I was, that was missing um, from my dad not being around, and um, I looked for that in my boyfriend, and that ended up, long story short, in a lot of shame and in a lot of heartbreak, and I didn't have my dad to walk through that with me. I didn't have his wisdom. I didn't have his comfort. Um, and so throughout the years, I really struggled with, with trusting, and especially, um, especially men, because the two most important men in my life had abandoned me or had left me or um, had failed me. And so I went about life um, in, this cynical, in this cynical mindset, and I just couldn't shake the idea that somebody 
that ev- that everybody had um, had something that they were hiding. And so I went about life like that. And it was through lots and lots of years of counseling and working through a lot of this heartbreak um, that that I was finally able to realize the Lord is the only one who has not failed me. You know, there are people who have failed me, whether it was in big ways or in small ways, but the Lord had not. And um, a couple of years ago um, on Father's Day, Father's Day is always really hard for obvious reasons. And um, it was it was a couple of years ago on Father's Day that I began to realize that the Lord had all along really been the father that I needed. And um, he was the one who provided for us financially. We, um, without going into too much detail, my dad had left a lot of his taxes unpaid. And so that fell on my mom to pay. And so we ended up having to sell our house and we paid off most of the tax debts um, with, with all of that money. And um, we still had some left over. And the Lord made that stretch and stretch and stretch for years for a family of six, this small amount of money for a family that of that size. And he just made it stretch and he made it um, he would always refill our bank accounts in some way or another, whether that was through um, anonymous friends sending us money or whether it was through um, my mom being able to work a little bit here and there or whether it was just money just showing up on our doorstep. It was the Lord always provided for us and he also provided us comfort, whether that was through friends or through his word or through um, different pastors. He provided us with that comfort that we needed that kept us together. Um, and he also provided wisdom for me as well growing up. And that was, I think that's the biggest thing that I missed in my life was not having the voice of my dad to speak into um, different situations, whether it was with relationships or with work or with life or with ministry, anything. The Lord had just continued to provide that wisdom through his word and even through other people who became those dad-like figures. And there are still some of those father-like figures in my life that I still talk to today, that I still go to with problems that still um, pour into me, um, the, just the things that the Lord is showing them and the, the things that the Lord knows that I need. And um, I'm just, I'm super thankful for that. And um, he's, the Lord has always um, given them the words to say when um, because he knows exactly what I need to hear. And um, so those people have really become like my second, my second dads, those father-like figures that I've needed throughout my life. And um, just looking back, I've seen how the Lord has acted like a father and he's filled all of those gaps, whether it was financially or spiritually or physically even. Um, he's provided, he's provided for me in that. He's provided for my family in that. And he's proven himself faithful and um, all throughout the Psalms, we see all of these examples um, of the writer talking about how the Lord does not forsake his children. He is the father to the fatherless, and he provides and protects um, those who those who love him and those who trust in him. And so um, the Lord has really proven those words to be true in my life, and um, I know that he can in yours too. Um, I don't know what your gaps are like, or, and I don't know what your dad's like, um, and I don't know what needs you need filled, but the Lord will fill them all. And he um, has been so faithful as to the point to where my relationship with my dad is restored and um, a relationship that I didn't think could be salvaged or um, or uh, built back up again. And there was a point in time where I didn't want anything to do with my dad. I didn't want um, to talk to him. I didn't want to hear from him. But um, the Lord has just shown my dad and I just so much. And he um, He's made, he's made a way for that relationship to be restored to the point that it is now, and um, I'm really thankful for that. And I know that the Lord can um, work restoration in your life, in your situation as well, and um, I just want you to be encouraged that the Lord does fill those gaps in ways that we might not expect or even want, um, but he does, and he proves himself faithful. He proves himself um, a perfect father to the fatherless, um, and I have a few moments um, every now and then where I look back and I wonder what if, you know, what if this all hadn't happened? What if my dad was still around? And um, what if what if none of this had happened? What would be different? And I realized that I wouldn't have the life that I have now by the grace of God. I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't even really, I wouldn't even be married to my husband, um, most likely if my dad had stuck around. And um, just looking back and seeing how the Lord has um, has taken what something that the enemy meant for evil and turned it into something good and um, through ways that I didn't um, expect. Um, and I also wouldn't have this deeper realization of who God is 
to me and who God is for me, I wouldn't have this realization of God as my heavenly father, um, as God, as my provider. And I'm thankful that I have that realization now and I have this deeper understanding of who God is. Um, and that is that God is my father and he's your father too.